Welcome back, Vol here for game three, FluffyCon. It's Orcs against Empire again. This time, a very different brand of Orcs. Uh, it's Henry uh, this time. Very first game against Henry, and it's good good when you're playing tournaments where most of the participants are people that you've played before, tournament regulars, but you wind up playing against somebody that you didn't have a chance to play for whatever reason, just didn't get round to it, or didn't get drawn against them in other tournaments. And this is my chance to really play Henry, Henry for the first time. Uh, most significantly, he's taken a Black Orc war boss on a Wyvern to this tournament. And um, as you guys uh, saw last year, uh, in my previous FluffyCon tournament where I played Chaos, um, I played against Ryan's... Um, you know, list with a, a wyvern again. Um, wyvern typically seen as quite a hard choice in a fluffy tournament. Although with the changes from seventh edition to eighth edition, um, the wyvern is considerably weaker, um, and he has a lot to watch out for. Having um, you know had had to face my cannon uh, this this first game, but his uh, black orc war boss is kitted out with a. Uh, Blade, a sort of might, plus one strength, and Guzzler's Battle Brew, which potentially gives him hatred or frenzy. So that's a bit of a worry. Uh, the mission is the plain old battle line. Uh, mission number one, same as 7th edition style missions. And Henry has finished his deployment um, later than I have, so me with plus one to the first turn, although Henry ends up winning it, has deployed most of his troops on the left-hand side. Now, um, the tournament organizer, Dave, has uh, put in some special rules for these, some of these missions where you get extra victory points for completing certain tasks, like maybe um, destroying your opponent's most expensive special unit or the most expensive war machine or whatever. In the previous couple of games, it was the most expensive, expensive um, uh, rare choice for the first game, the most expensive special choice for the second game. I managed to pick up the um, the bonus objectives on both games, giving me some extra points. But for this game, the objective was to get a ranked infantry unit into your opponent's deployment zone by the end of the game for an, an additional 200 points. Now, um, yeah, uh, this could go either way, to be honest. And he's got two chariots, one of them with a character in it with a Porco's pig, pig sticker or something. And that gives you an extra point of attack for every rank your enemy's unit has. So very effective and fluffy kind of thing. But he doesn't have any fanatics. And he's just got the one rock lobber. So on the other hand, um, not too much shooting from his, his army. Um, I've deployed with a lot of stuff in the middle, knights on the left hand and the fl and the flagellants on the left hand side. After I saw him put his boar boys and his um, his wyvern on that side as well. Next image, uh, that's the deployment of his guys. He's got some squig uh, herds as well behind his two units of forest goblin spider riders. He's also got a singular goblin hero with a great weapon in between them. I think he decided to redeploy, redeploy them, um, redeploy that guy elsewhere though. And his uh, skull munching wyvern heading around the, the side, you guys might recognize that as Azhag the Slaughterer riding skull muncher the wyvern. Obviously not the special character for this game, just a regular uh, war boss. Next image, um, he's got his uh, rock lobber deployed on the far right of the photo. You can barely see it sort of poking into the photograph. And uh, just some big units of 30, 25 orcs uh, in the middle with two chariots, so quite a strong center. But he's deployed his rock lobber cleverly behind the building opposite the cannon so that I can't shoot his rock lobber with the cannon. So the only targets for the cannon at this early stage of the game are his chariots, which, to be honest, are what I would have shot at anyway, given the fact that the, 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 the wyvern flies away if I don't get the first turn. Which, of course, he does. So going to the next photo, uh, here's a wyvern flying behind this, uh, this, this hill. And remembering, guys, um, you can see over the hill to spot large targets, but there's a building in the middle of the battlefield which he cleverly used to position in between the wyvern and the cannon. Now, his plan here, this is quite important, we're going to talk about this photo for a while, is moving the spider riders in front of the knights. He's already got a, f a free 12-inch move from the, from the vanguard, so he uses a march move to put them straight in front of the knights, and I think he was trying to be quite smart here. This means that the knights can't charge the wyvern because the spider riders are blocking the way. If I charge the spider riders, he could flee, meaning that I destroy him and end up on the hill, able, uh, enabling him to actually charge me with either the boar boys or the, uh, the, the wyvern. If he holds, it means that if I overrun onto the hill, same thing will happen, and if I reform, he'll be able to charge me with his wyvern. However, what happened here is that in my following turn, I charged his, his goblin uh, spider riders. He held, 
and I destroyed them outright and reformed, still staying behind the film, behind the hill and not actually in vision of his ball boys, but allowing him to charge me with his wyvern. Now that's a risk for me because if I fail a terror check, he just runs me down, but it gives me a chance to cast a spell, uh, one, of the, one of which my spells was Mind Razor, which I ended up successfully doing, uh, preventing him from, from taking the risk of charging the, the, the wyvern into the knights. Hopefully you guys followed all that. You will have if you are um, a rules experts in Warhammer, so to speak. But uh, this is what's going on. But um, my plan here was that if he was to flee with the goblins, I would have redirected into the uh, into the wyvern and tried to inflict as many wounds on the wyvern as possible with the knights and potentially driving him off the board and really winning the game there and then. Next image, let's go back to the center for a minute. And he's moved in, first of all, with his orcs and uh, chariots at full speed ahead, not any, not rolling any ones for animosity, so I'm really going to have to try and deal with these guys somehow. Whittling them down with shooting is going to be the first uh, first plan, uh, plan A, but plan B is just trying to outflank them in combat. Next image, um, as you can see here, the knights have hit the uh, spider riders, completely eliminating them, and I've charged onto the hill with the pistoliers, and during the shooting phase, the pistoliers completely wiped out this the uh, the uh, the goblin unit, the spider runner unit, with shooting. Now I know that enabled him to charge me uh, in the following turn with the boar boys, but I was close enough to my guys to be able to flee back through them and avoid the boar boys completely. Next image on the right hand side of the field, he's actually left me no uh, infantry units at all. So on the one hand, I've got a unit of ten crossbowmen and twenty five swordsmen, effectively doing very little. But um, what I could do here is actually deploy the swordsmen on the right side of the side of the forest so that if need be they could charge through the forest and flank one of his units coming through or turn around and go for his deployment zone and get the plus 200 victory points. The forest unfortunately turned out to be a venom thicket so I was going to be taking a lot of casualties charging through it but of course as a last resort it's always worth doing that because you tend to only take say maybe three or four guys dead and uh, that doesn't affect your combat resolution when you do get into combat so that is what I had in mind there. Next image, indeed, it's his turn, and he's fleeing away with the. Uh, I'm fleeing away with the pistoliers, uh, fleeing through the flagellants, causing no, well, nobody failing any panic checks, and his ball boys failing the charge in the background, and the well, wyvern simply looking for a different target. I forgot to tell you guys, but the first turn, uh, volley gun, sorry, not volley gun, rocket storm battery fired, killing 14 orcs in one of his big units. So, a big, big. You know, big blast again. Uh, previous game really worked, and uh, this uh, second game uh, really doing well with the um, rocket battery as well. Next image, he's chosen to move his wyvern into the middle of the field, again shielding his uh, vision from with the building so he can't be shot by my cannon. But what you're seeing here is the Empire turn two, responding to what he's done in his second turn. And his boar boys have simply moved around a bit. Uh, my knights have had vision to see the boar boys uh, from, from around the hill. So my knights have charged his boar boys, wiping them out. And responding, I'm moving my pistoliers back around after rallying them to shoot at the wyvern, again with the handgunners as well, and simply reforming the flagellants and swordsmen in such a way that if he does charge for either of those units with his wyvern, I'll be able to counter charge from either side with my other a group of infantry. So actually feeling like I'm really on top of the situation here, and I've positioned the knights on the left in such a way that after I've destroyed the boar boys, they'll be able to um, overrun off the board so they can't be charged by swig herd. So really nice play happening here and my cannon got to say this the cannon first shot eliminates his um, orc big boss riding the chariot and the chariot to boot with the help of the handgunners so um, although he didn't fail any pank checks that's one character very dangerous character down the tubes already with a great cannon shot next image henry feeling a bit nervous now um, knows that he's got nowhere else to run with this war boss except, you know, to not use them. So he's charged my general's unit, and luckily, uh, leadership eight with a reroll passed the terror check, thank God. But this puts him in a dire situation. He's actually been affected by my, um, my Melkos myth-defying miasma, whatever you call it, um, reducing three from his weapon skill and initiative and blister skill and movement, uh, which helps, but he still charges in here, um, fights my champion in a challenge, and kills the champion and um, passes his break test despite losing the combat by one and this is just such a good position for me because it means that I've got three ranks and a banner up on him and in the background I can charge the pistoliers out of the way of the flagellants in the next turn and also simultaneously charge the wyvern with the flagellants bringing them into the, either the rear or the flank and just crushing that wyvern and really giving me a ton of points and a big game advantage 
Next photo, here's Aux moving down, uh, feeling very wary of that big uh, rocket battery, which again is pummeling them. Uh, turn two and three sees the Empire War Machine just devastate those Orcs, hitting three times in a row, just blasting them, just flattening them completely. Every time it hits, threes to wound on the Orcs, and just covering tons of them with that marker. So with um, great luck, that War Machine just absolutely going off, and this makes it easier and easier for me to actually whittle down those Orcs and crush them in combat in the last turn. So the, the charge of the Orcs really losing momentum. The General's gone and just puttering out. Next photo, um, some snotlings have come in uh, to the way of the swordsman here, just to prevent me from charging through the forest, but that shouldn't be a big, big issue either. What I can do here is actually just charge them with my halberd ears through the forest and move the swordsman around and go for the objective. So that's going to be good as well. Next image, the flagellants indeed charging the flank of the general as planned. Um, my pistol is charging his snotlings just to get rid of them and conveniently overrunning past the orcs in the background. Um, in my magic face, casting um, Occam's Mind Razor on the flagellants, giving them um, absolutely no chance of failing their strength 10 on the, on the wyvern, just ridding it of its life. And um, the general and wyvern had already been reduced from shooting, so it was an easy target and pick up the big, big victory there. Next photo, uh, my knights have returned from overrunning off the board, but uh, Henry's carefully positioned his squig hoppers um, there to receive them. Now, the knights have no choice but to move on from when they came on and stopping one inch away from the enemy, and that gives Henry a chance to charge the knights in his turn, but unfortunately for him, um, taking four, four or five casualties and doing none in return and losing his squig hoppers as well due to the, um, the knights basically just outclassing them. Next photo, middle of the battlefield, overview shot, he's left with really two or three units and that's it, all the snotlings are dead. He's got two orcs um, basically turning tail and heading back towards their own deployment zone due to the Hellstorm volley uh, rocket battery just devastating them and the pistol is sneaking around the, ba the back of the, the field just to gun them down with their pistols at the last minute. And uh, he's really just joined his remaining orc unit with the BSP. Sorry about the blurry, blurry photo. Next photo, my um, unit of hand, uh, crossbows have entered the building next to his rock lobber, and the unit of swordsmen just advancing towards him, ready to take them out in the final turn. I've actually done a little bit of highlighting on the um, on the blue on some of these units, such as the crossbowmen, and a bit of a an extra highlight on the crossbows themselves. Really stands out and makes a big difference. So I'm glad I took the time to do that in the last night before the tournament. And next photo, the orcs are fleeing. Um, I've positioned my uh, my uh, horseman, the the pistol is behind the uh, the hill, so that if he continues fleeing, he'll hit them, um, pop out behind them, and be off the board. But unfortunately for me, not only did he rally in his final turn, but my my rocket battery tried one more gritty shot at his orcs overshot and actually killed one of the pistoliers, of which there were four left failing my panic check and me losing the pistoliers, and that actually turned out to be the only unit that I lost throughout the entire game. That's how much of a massacre it was. Swordsman in the foreground here, with the help of the BSB, eliminating one unit of uh, night goblins, leaving Henry with just one unit of orcs left. I've killed his war machine in the, in the end zone. Going to the next photo, it shows you that, the um, crossbowmen just getting out here, and uh, turn six, going in and wiping that out as well. So Henry left with a BSB, a block of what started out as 25, 30 orcs, and nothing else. I've lost a, a general. The, the wyvern actually killed the general in, in the second round of combat, but died. Pistoliers are dead, and I think I might have lost um, another unit, maybe one of the detachments somewhere along the line as well. But that's it. So a uh, heavy victory to me. Unfortunately, this means that in day two, I'll be playing at least uh, a couple of games against some of the, the top four players of the tournament with, I'm sorry to say, um, lists that completely outclass mine. So it's going to take a miracle for me to um, end up as one of the top three players of the tournament. But if I do, you guys will be the first to know. So uh, check out the battle reports that will be coming online uh, probably within the next 48 hours. See you guys then.